Okay, today we're going to discuss the gram-positive bacilli. We have discussed already all the cocci related to your gram-positive. Okay, so today, we have here your gram-positive bacilli, but they are eventually aerobic. So, by sinabing bacilli, so they have here the spherical, I mean, they have the elongated um, shape. Okay, so general classification, so we have here the illustration for that. We can classify your gram-positive bacilli as either number one, okay, non-spore forming, non-branching. We have also here branching and spore forming. For your non-branching, we can classify that one here according to the catalase reaction. So we have here the genus which are catalase positive, non-spore former, non-branching. Um, non so, catalase positive includes your genus Corinibacterium, and we have also here Listeria. All the rest here, which are, are considered to be which are non spore former, non spore former, non branching, which are catalase negative, includes the genus Erecephalodrix, Archaeobacterium, Gardnerella, and even your Lactobacillus. On the other hand, uh, branching gram positive bacilli includes your actinomycetes and your partially acid fast nanocardia. And here we have the spore former, which is also catalase positive. And we have also here the, um, that could also be differentiated here as your beta hemolytic and motil in your bacillus, which is your bacillus serious. And we have your non hemolytic, this is non hemolytic, non motil. Okay, that's your bacillus anthracis. Okay, we start the discussion with your Corinibacterium diphtheriae. Okay, according to Bacterium diphtheriae, other name for that is your Klebs, Lofler's, Bacillus. Okay, so under the microscope, so we have the gram staining results. Most likely that one would have here curved, slightly curved, and parallel side, so giving a club shape, uh, shape, morphology. That's why they now have Corine form because of being club shape. And at the same time, this is a bacilli that may arrange side by side, giving you a palisade arrangement. That may form here, this bacilli could lie uh, to one another, like this one. So, isang bacilli na ganyan. Okay, so isang ganyan, other, other bacilli mag lie to other end. Giving you an L or even your V arrangement that sometimes give here the characteristic na Chinese letter arrangement. So, parang ba Chinese letter, parang mga ganyan, ganyan. So, something ganyan. Ko halong. Okay, so we have here the virulence factor of our cryonibacterium diphtheriae. The first one, okay, the tox gene. Okay, the tox gene is encoded by our bacteriophage. Okay, so mean to say your cryonibacterium diphtheriae try to cause here the diphtheria if that one has been infected by your tox gene coming from your bacteriophage. So, hindi lahat ng cryonibacterium diphtheriae would try to cause here the diphtheria or try to cause a disease. Again, not unless that one has been infected by our bacteriophage, we try to inject the tox gene. Okay, the tox gene is actually produces her, uh, eventually your diphtheria toxin. Okay, this is your diphtheria toxin. Okay, this is the gene which eventually try to, responsible here for the production of your diphtheria toxin. Okay, your diphtheria toxin is made up of two subunits. We have the fragment A and fragment B. Okay, the fragment A is the one uh, active, responsible for the diphtheria and the toxicity. Fragment B, on the other hand, uh, it try to mediate the entry or try to bind to the host epithelial cells. So, ang fragment B, siya lang ang nag-allow uh, the attachment of the entire toxin to your host tissues. Pero ang pinaka-active, responsible for the toxicity, giving the, the cytotoxic effect of that will be the fragment A. But they are entire unit silang dalawa. We call it one sort of the theory of toxin, entire unit nila. And divided here into fragment A and fragment B. In order for that to become active, then kailangan muna siya mag, it will be acted upon by our trypsin, or you call this one as your trypsinization. Okay, then, um, basically your, if, that coronavirus diphtheria has been infected by your bacteriophage, we try to inject the tox gene, then it try to cause here the diphtheria. The diphtheria is highly fatal. It could eventually result here to death of 
dentary tissue or even the human if left untreated because it tries to block the protein synthesis of the host here. So protein is needed, very important component of the host tissue. Okay, the toxicity of your toxin or your diphtheria toxin is basically um, okay, um, aided by the following requirements or the following factors. This is very important in order for that to become highly fatal or highly uh, virulent na toxin. Number one, it requires here an alkaline pH at a pH of 7.8 to 8. Another one should be present here with the presence of your iron and even your oxygen. Again, not all coinobacterium diphtheriae when try to cause here the diphtheria. It will only be coming or causing here the diphtheria if that one has been infected by the toxin coming from your bacteriophage. Okay, then we go to the clinical manifestation or the clinical disease caused by your coronavirus diphtheria. So basically that one tried to cause your diphtheria. We have here the vaccine for prevention of your um, diphtheria. So we have the DPT. This is a, a, a tri-vaccine <clears throat> primarily for the prevention not only of your diphtheria but as well as your pertosis and your tetanus. That's for your coronavirus diphtheria. Uh, Bordetella pertosis and your Clostridium tetani. So that try to prevent the tree infection. Okay, so diphtheria again, we have here two manifestations. One is the pulmonary, the other one is the cutaneous or skin infection. Okay, your pulmonary infection, diphtheria, is being transmitted by your respiratory droplets. Okay, so we're in the bacteria try to enter the body through your nasal. Okay, our respiratory tract. And that would have here an unspecific manifestation like fever, headache, malaise. Okay, then it tries to affect your tonsils and your pharynx. And that would have here the sore throat manifestation because that one is a respiratory infection. And later on, as the bacteria try to um, bind and uh, manifest, or try to bind and try to cause damage with your respiratory epithelial tissue, it tries to release toxin. And this toxin tries to produce here your... Okay, um, tissue necrosis and exudate formation. The exudate form here is gray-white, called that one's your pseudomembrane formation. Okay, and that one, kumakapal ang membrane natin. And that the color yellow, that color gray-white. And later on, pag maging severe manifestation, so pwede siyang magbablock ng airway passage. And pwede mamatay ang patient, hindi siya makahinga because of that one. Another one, we have the cutaneous infection. This is your skin infection. We have here the hand, through your hand mouth, close hand mouth contact. Okay, so this is a cutaneous infection, skin infection, a form of your non healing ulcer. Okay, with the dirty gray membrane that will always identify your coronibacterium diphtheriae. Okay, lab result, the gram stain result of this one. So, pleomorphic, but something pleomorphic. It assumed different shape and morphology. So this one would be club shape bacilli. Again, it would arrange here side by side or palisade. That we give you characteristic L form or V shape. Okay, that would have your characteristic na Chinese letter arrangement. Another thing about your coronavirus diphtheria, sa kanyang cytoplasm contains here the metachromatic granules, or you call that one as your babes and granules. The meta metachromatic granules of, or the Babes and scrines made up of polymerized polyphosphate that is being stained primarily by our methylene blue. On the staining with your methylene blue, it would have your characteristic na beaded appearance, from beads, granules kasi siya, and that would be identified as dark stained area. So like for example, kung itong bacteria natin, so pag may mga ganyan, granules here, or for example, kung itong bacteria natin, may granules siya na Okay, my granules siya. So, this will be colored dark here compared with uh, some background na light, light staining or light stain that will identify as that as your metachromatic granules. Okay, then we have here the cultural characteristics. So, again, our coronibacterium would able to grow here in a selective, selective na culture means I call it one as your CT. Okay, BA or your cysteine telluride blood agar. This is a modification, a modified Tinsdale agar. So this one contains the following 
um, component. We have here the sheep blood agar. Meron din siyang bovine albumin or bovine serum. Then meron siyang cysteine and we have your potassium telluride. The potassium telluride is responsible here for the blackening the colony. So if that one were able to hydrolyze your potassium telluride, then magkakaroon ng blackening of the colony. That's why positive natin, blackening of the colony with your brown halo. So black na colony, okay, so black siya, tapos may shade siya na brown surrounding that black na colony. Okay, so another one, you could also have here another culture media that would allow also the growth of your Corinbactium the theory. They have here your Pi medium or Loeffler's agar, which this is contained here the blood or even your serum. So one also try to be responsible for inducing the formation of the metachromatic rhymes. Okay, so we have here the different species of your bacterium. So aside from your diphtheriae, okay, we have also here the ulcerans and we have also your pseudotuberculosis. So they're identified by the following biochemical reactions and even cultural, cultural characteristics. Again, all of them are able to grow in your sustained telluride blood agar or your thin stale agar that will give all of them here, this one, black colony with the brown halo. Okay, for the urease test, it will only give a positive result for the ulcerans and pseudotuberculosis, but not with your current bacteria theory. And gelatin hydrolysis test will give only a positive result with your, okay, your ulcerans, but not with your diphtheria and not with your pseudotuberculosis. That with, okay, this will help differentiate the three species of your current bacteria. Okay, so we have here the summary of your biochemical reactions. Again, urease tests. We are detecting for the enzyme urease. So our substrate for that, we have your urea brought in the form of your stewards. So if your bacteria contains the enzyme urease, this will convert the urea in your substrate to your carbon dioxide in your ammonia. <clears throat> okay, then you add here your phenol red as your indicator for that. Okay, so positive result is red. Okay, so ang positive natin, we have ulcerans and the pseudotuberculosis, but not your coronary bacterium diphtheria. Gelatin hydrolysis test will identify the enzyme gelatinase with its ability to hydrolyze your gelatin to liquefy your gelatin. So ang positive natin with the gelatinase would be the liquefaction of your gelatin. Ang positive lang dan for that is only your ulcerans, but not your diphtheria and not your pseudotuberculosis. And then we have also here the test for the toxigenicity for the presence of your toxin that try to cause here or containing the toxin. So pag nag-positive dito sa ating uh, uh, ELEC test, ELEC test is the immunoprecipitation test, is a precipitation, positive result precipitation. And this works in the principle of your immunomine to say this is antigen antibody reaction. Okay, we are, detecting, we are detecting for the toxin gene, tox gene, as our antigen. So, para ma-detect ito, kailangan natin ng antibody, which is your antitox, antitoxin, in order for you to detect that one. At ang positive natin, the result would be your precipitation with the formation of your white na precipitin. Okay, so again, ELEC test is for identification of your toxin. If again, because again, as what I'm saying before, the bayor, not all coronibacterium diphtheriae contains the toxin. So only those which has been infected by our bacteriophage, which has injected the toxin, makapag-produce ng toxin natin, or diphtheria toxin. And that's only the one causing the diphtheria, na this disease. Okay, procedure for that, we have this one. So your bacterial inoculum na positive for the toxin, you try to streak, is streak mo dito. Then we have here that middle portion. This is your sample. You wanted to know here, itong sample na to, you wanted to know kung ano ba siya, may toxin ba siya or wala. Then we have also here the negative control on the other side. Dito sa baba ni sample natin. Then after that one, lalagyan mo dito sa gitna ng filter paper or your strip containing the antitoxin. So ito yung antibody natin. Then try to incubate at 35 degrees Celsius for 18 to 24 hours. Then try to observe for the positive result. 
Okay, so remember ito ay positive control. So we are expecting that one na magkakaroon siya ng positive reaction. Positive reaction niya, magkakaroon siya ng white precipitin. So pag ganyan siya. Okay, so white precipitin away from your area kung saan nag-merge ang ating sample or your bacterial inoculum and your antitoxin as your antiser or, anti or your reagent. Then, your, if your sample contains a toxin, siya naman magpaproduce din white na precipitin. Okay, then, mag-merge silang dalawa nitong positive control. Okay, then, okay, pag nag-merge sila, they will form here an arch of identity. So, kung wala siyang toxin, hindi siya magpaproduce ng white precipitin, hindi siya mag-merge dito sa ating positive control na white precipitin. So, for the negative control, for example, so wala siyang white precipitin, so hindi siya makapag-form na. Okay, so that's your ELEC test for identification of your toxin. Okay, another species of your Carnibacterium, we have here your Carnibacterium jequium. Carnibacterium jequium here is um, normal microbial flora of our skin. And that one will try to cause infection among immunocompromised patients, especially undergoing the chemotherapy. And those patients uh, having this uh, central uh, vascular access or central lines, or even with uh, um, um, heart processes. And therefore, try to cause infection for those na mga patient natin. So, para siyang iatrogenic infection din. This one is also identified as multi-drug resistant. So, hindi siya masyado nag-react sa ating mga um, uh, several panel of your antibiotics. The death one is lipophilic, so lipid loving siya. That's why ang kanyang culture media is your SBA with your twin 80. Twin 80 is um, a wetting agent. A wetting agent so for the lipids, providing the lipid component, the requirement niya para mag-grow siya. So we have here the characteristics ulit. So thin steel halo, hindi siya nag-grow dito. Okay, unlike your ulcerans, so the tuberculosis, and even your diphtheria, the body try to, to grow on that. Producing a black colony with brown halo, sa kanya hindi siya nag-grow because again, dito siya mag-grow because this is lipophilic. lipophilic. Then another one, your race test, negative din siya, and then your gelatin liquefaction, negative din siya. So lahat ng result na with your biochemical reaction is negative for your coronavirus JKU. This, that will differentiate this one with your uh, coin bacterium diphtheria and coin bacterium ulcerans and your pseudotuberculosis. Okay, now we go to the next na catalase positive na gram positive bacilli versus aerobic. We have your listeria monocytogenes. Listeria monocytogenes could be found here in a variety of environmental uh, area. So it could be found here in the water, in the soil, vegetation, or even in your poultry products or milk products. Okay, we have here the virulence factor associated with your listeria. The first one, we have your listeriolysin O or your hemolysin. So this one, the virulence factor, it tries to damage the phagosome of your, um, the, um, the membrane of the phagosome of your macrophage, which is your phagocyte. And therefore, preventing here the phagocytosis by disrupting or destroying your phagocyte. Specifically, um, and the destroy na sa phagocyte, which is your macrophage, is the uh, phagosome membrane. And therefore, it would render your macrophage to be not able to perform its function in its ability to phagocytose your uh, bacteria or even other organisms. Then we have also here the protein PC. Protein P60 is to destroy to induce here the phagocytosis by increasing the adherence uh, or attachment of your bacteria to your mammalian cells to try to cause here the damage. We have here the disease manifestation associated with your listeriosis. The first one, we have your, for the pregnant patient, okay, so if the patient has been uh, pregnant during the infection, especially during the third trimester pregnancy, so the bacteria can uh, cross-react or can eventually cross the placenta. It can go to the fetus and try to cause infection on the baby. Okay, so most likely, since nagkaroon ng infection ng baby natin, just like pareho sila ng ating strep agalactri. So strep agalactri, di ba, nagkakos din siya ng neonatal sepsis, di ba? So during the delivery, pwede siya maipasa sa 
from the mother and infected to the baby. Same with this one. Since ang bacteria mo, your listeria monocytogenous are able to uh, go to the fetal circulation, it can induce here the sepsis to the baby. Ang mangyari niya, nagkakaroon ng premature labor, okay, nag-spontaneous abortion, stillbirth, pag sa may stillbirth, mamamatay ang baby, or because also the septic delivery, so, karoon ng sepsis ang baby natin. Another one for the newborn, ito ay pag hindi siya nabuhay, for the newborn, pag nabuhay ang newborn. Okay, so, pag nabuhay ang newborn natin, could have here either early onset or late onset manifestation. Okay, so the early onset, okay, the early onset is basically that would try to have here manifestation as early as several days, few days after the delivery. So the baby try to have manifestation of the sepsis, okay, and uh, because of the aspiration of the um, uh, infected na amniotic fluid during the delivery. Okay, and therefore, nagkakaroon ng sepsis ng baby this early onset. Nabuhay nga siya, pero may sepsis ang baby. Uh, pwede siya mabuhay pag naagapan. You can give several antibiotics for that in a way that one is just a bacterial infection. Another one, you could also have here the late onset. Pag late onset, this one try to manifest several weeks, several days. Medyo matagal ba siya? You try to deliver the baby as looking as healthy siya, pero after several few days or weeks, for example, it would have your manifestation of your meningitis. Another one, this listeria could also try to cause infection among immunocompromised patients. That's in the form of your CNS infection, that's your meningitis. And endocarditis is your heart, heart inflammation or heart infection. Okay, we have here the lab tests. Okay, so microscopy, we have here the gram stain result, morphology of your listeria, that one is cocobacillus. So, coco basilo siya parang short pero mataba na basilay. They appear to be in single or even in short chains or even in the palisades just like your corn bacteria and the therigate. Culture, so colony could be able to grow. I mean, this bacteria could be grown, isolated, could grow here in your SBA, chocolate agar plate or even your nutrient agar. This one would have your narrow zone of beta hemolysis appearing to be small, smooth, round, and translucent na colony. Identification, so this one could grow at a temperature between ideally 30 to 35, but it could have, you're able to grow as, ganito, as sobrang colder na temperature, 0.5 degrees up to 45 degrees Celsius. Kaya tinawag ito, this one, this bacteria is capable of cold enrichment. So, pag ganito, 0.5, so that's the refrigerator temperature. So, usually kasi, we tend to incubate our culture media at uh, 35 degrees Celsius. So, that's um, room temp, or that's, uh, I mean, that incubator temperature. Sa kanya is 0.5, that's cold temperature. Kaya, this is your cold enrichment, able to grow on that. A specimen for isolation, so you can have your CSF, you can also have here the blood, or even your placenta, or even lesion with your swab. So, pwede natin siya ma-isolate. Okay, then we have your other identification test here. Biochemical test for identification of your listeria monocytogenous. So, we have motility. So, it would have here the end over end tumbling motility. In the motility medium, this would have very characteristic na umbrella shape or inverted na Christmas tree growth pattern. They're able to grow here between 22 to 25 degrees Celsius, not at 35 degrees Celsius. Then it would have your share the same characteristics as with your strep agalactiae, which, which are your group B, the group B na strep. So this also give a positive result with your hepiorate hydrolysis the same way as your strep agalactiae. Also give a CAM test positive result. Only that, ang kanyang growth characteristic pattern here or hemolytic pattern, di ba sa strep agalactiae, ang CAM test na is arrowhead. So dito is, would have your rectangle block na, rectangle block na uh, hemolytic pattern. So kailangan mo strict ang ating staff audios strict po perpendicular for that your listeria monocytogenous it will give a characteristic na rectangle block 
na magalitik pattern. Comparing with the uh, arrowhead pattern with your strap agalak chain. Pero mas maganda siya na ma-manifest ang kanyang rectangle block na himolisa siya if you are streaking rhodococcus eggy instead of your stuff aureus. All the stuff aureus pwede din siya mag-manifest. Another one, this one, your Listeria monocytogens also share the same characteristic with your group B na strep, both your intercoccus and non-intercoccus na strep in terms of their 40% na bile is choline hydrolysis test. So this one, will able also to grow in 40% the bile and try to hydrolyze your escoline, producing hair blocking in the colony. Okay, just like in your group D na strep. Okay, as a summary between your corinopactin therapy and your listeria monocytogenous because both of them are catalase positive na gram positive bacilli. So, in terms of the beta-hemolytic reaction, okay, with your SPA, Quinopatium diphtheria would have here a very small na zone of hemolysis, whereas your Lysaria monocytogenous would have here a narrow zone of hemolytic reaction. Lysaria monocytogenous motile giving you a N over N tumbling motility versus your non-motile na Quinopatium diphtheria. So, ELEC test only for the Quinopatium diphtheria. Okay, CAM test is positive for rectangle block appearance or hemolytic reaction with your Okay, Listeria. Metachromatic granules, your V, the L shape, Chinese character, character arrangement is with Quarinopactin Theriae. Then we have also here your umbrella shape, inverted Christmas tree, cold enrichment, okay, Listeria, monocytogenes.